signs you may be emasculating your men and how to stop it. Are you doing any of these signs that's making your men want to flee or try to avoid you as much as possible? In this video, you're going to gain clarity and understanding as to what your man is feeling, what he is thinking, so that way you can take your relationship to the next level that is also going to result in massive business success and career. So if you're excited about that, make sure you like this video and let's get into it. So I'm gonna go over the signs on how you are emasculating your men and I'm also going to bring solutions to this. So I'm not just gonna say you suck, you suck, you suck because I'm not gonna do that. I seek for solutions to problems. So I'm gonna provide you with solutions after I go over these signs. Sign number one, you take over a lot. You speak over your men, you don't let him speak. You always say that you're right and he's wrong and you're perfect and you're the best and you're Jesus Christ. Keeping records of wrongs. Ooh, that one's a fun one. Isn't it fun to keep records of wrongs and just like manipulating the guy? You do this wrong, boom, 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 boom. It's kind of stroking your ego. You know you love it, keeping records of wrongs. Why do you do it? Hmm, time to analyze why you're doing that. Maybe your mother did that. Maybe your sibling did that. Maybe your um, dad, if your dad was around. How's that gonna help anybody? The next one, you put him down, kind of like talking about keeping records of wrongs, you put him down all the time, saying that he sucks, he's not man enough, he's not working hard enough, he's not providing nothing enough, helping him to see once again that he's not enough. For someone to criticize so much, they're pretty much criticizing themselves too. A person that is healed, that has done their work of healing and forgiving themselves and then their partner, because it's not about their partner, it's really about them moving forward and living in freedom and not be so angry all the time. When those women take the time to do that, they're not going to put anybody down because they see a different light. They see a different perspective in life. So that's another sign. And I used to do this. So just so you know, like all these signs, like I fall short too. So don't feel like, oh yeah, I'm a saint and this is perfect. No, we're not Jesus Christ and we make mistakes, but if we're working towards getting better every day, even if it's just like 1% every day, you're becoming a better version of yourself every day for you, for you. It's like the overall picture, the vision. Oh, this one is a huge one. When you don't believe in him, why did you marry him or why are you with him? Oh, this one is my favorite. I see this so much. You ready? You criticize him way too much. Like it's too much in a point where he can't breathe and he's kind of like drowning. I mean, it's, I know some certain personalities, you know, do very well to criticism, but let's face it, all personalities can't deal with just so much criticism. They can't, they just absolutely cannot function well when it's constant criticism. Let's put ourselves in their shoes for just like one second. <laughs> How would it make you feel if you're being criticized every single day? You'll probably think that you're not good enough, you're not sexy enough, you're probably thinking you're fat, you're probably thinking attractive enough, right? How do you think he's gonna take it? Probably the same way. So just imagine, who criticized you so damn much? Was it your mom, your dad? Who is it? Analyze it and stop it. <laughs> it's just, it's too much. It's one thing to give feedback and all that kind of stuff, but it's like asking them, hey, you know, this particular thing happened. Would you like feedback on it? And I promise I will give it nicely. <laughs> You know, some people, they're much more direct. Sure, you can be direct with them, but some, they're a little bit sen sensitive, like me. I'm a little bit sensitive, you know? Like, don't be too direct with me. So ask them, can I give you some feedback? Instead of like, you suck, goodbye. Uh, for sure, a goodbye. Another one, constantly <laughs> yelling at him. I've seen this a lot when I was growing up. It drove me insane. I don't wanna to get too much involved with that, but it's just, it drives me insane. And if you're doing that, you're hurting your children if you have children. And if you don't have children, you're planning to have children and you're doing that, it's hurting them, big time. So think about the overall picture. Are you being that leader? Does a leader constantly yell? I don't think so. Not the leaders I know, a real leader. The next sign is you entertain other men and or enjoy getting other men's attention. I fell short in this one. And that was, I used to enjoy getting other men's attention and I felt dirty and disgusted. Even though it was happening, I just didn't like it. And that is a form of emasculation. It's like I didn't like it, but at the same time I liked it. How cruel and evil is that? So I knew that there's a root going on because a sane, <laughs> happy wife and girlfriend, don't do that, that's weird. It's really weird. So 
I was like, why is this happening? Like, I'm enjoying this man's attention, but I am with him. This is horrible. This is disgusting. This is what leads to not what we want. Thank goodness I'm faithful. But it's still in that way, just the thoughts, entertaining those thoughts are not, not good at all. So I knew that there was a root going on. I spoke about it with my boyfriend and it just feels so good to talk about those demons <laughs> with him because let me tell you, it's hard. But when you're with someone that you know you can trust. Yeah, I know men have their things going on. We also have our things, okay? They put up with your, you know what? And we put up with her, okay? So it's a great match, but how can we come together in harmony? Communicating. I've shared with my men things I never shared with anybody before. And they were demons of mine, skeletons of mine that I wasn't proud of, but it brought us closer together. And that's the point of intimacy. Not so much sex, but that intimacy where you can freely share what you've been through, how you're feeling, what you're ashamed of. You know you can trust this individual to create that space for you. How can we create that space for our man? That's a challenge, my friend. But if we continue to move forward and get better in that, you're in the right path. <laughs> The next sign, telling him he's not men enough. Now here's the solutions to all of those problems. How to boost your man's self-confidence. You ready? Number one, stop treating him like a child or you didn't marry a child. Stop looking at it that way. That's like so even weird to even think about. You married a sexy, attractive man. You know what happened? Outside circumstances happen. Money, success. I'm not saying all those things are bad, but it got to our heads. So how can it not get to our heads and still have all that success that we want without forgetting when we were once sexually attracted to our man? What happened? <sighs> Lord help me. The next solution is don't constantly correct him. So if you're constantly correcting him, he already has other people for that. Let him figure it out. He'll figure it out. He's a grown man. He can take care of himself, honey. Trust me, he's good. You just encourage the dude, okay? The next solution is giving him space. This one, I wasn't good at. In the past in my relationship, I used to not give space to my boyfriend and he just felt he, he wasn't good. Every time he wanted to leave the house to just get fresh air, gather his thoughts of what just happened, I was like, no, I was blocking the door. <laughs> on him. Can you believe that? That was me. And it was because of my insecurities. No, I don't want to be abandoned because I have daddy issues because my dad wasn't there. So don't leave me. Mm. Get where I'm going? Now I value space. Oh my God. If I can take a chance to just be with myself and he wants to go <laughs> take a breather, by all means. I value space so much because it just brings us even closer together and I missed you and all that great stuff that come after that, space. The next solution is thank him when he does take the time to offer help. Thank you so much for stepping up. Oh my God, I stepped, the, I stepped away for like a second and then you stepped up, thank you! Cause I'm constantly overbearing, constantly controlling, constantly over your head. <sighs> thank you, thank you so much for your help, of course. This next solution, and it's a fun one, it's a life motto that I live by with my boyfriend and they love this. Men, if you love this, like if you genuinely want your girl or soon to be whatever, and that is calling him your warrior. Now I know that can be cheesy for some people, but it's so true. Like men were wired to be warriors, but because they're not warriors today, it's because us women, hi, I'm here to step all over you. Missing the pendant. I don't need a man. Great marketing propagandas out there. Okay, let's just get, get back to reality. Hi, you see me? Okay, great. Let's be honest. By the time you're 60, 70, whatever, you're gonna wish you took this particular advice. And I'm so thankful that I did because I've grown so much in this relationship. I value it. I don't care what personality you are, all women crave a warrior next to them. We do. The reason why you may think that you don't is because you haven't even experienced a warrior next to you. And that's okay. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help you. Okay. <laughs> I was in that situation before. It's amazing when you tell them you're my warrior, you know, you're my king. Uh, king is okay. But the warrior, mm, 
try that on your husband or your man and i kind of want to know what's the feedback on it please I, I really genuinely want to know what they think of it and men if you're listening to this what do you think of that comment down below engage with me i would love to know give me all the feedback that i need <laughs> thank you yeah warrior we all crave a warrior next to us because they make us feel like true queens true actual queens that we are we are queens just need a little training just a bit men you need training a little bit too I can't speak for men a lot because clearly I'm a woman, but you get what I'm saying. Another solution is help him to improve, but make it to a way it's his idea. We all know that when someone comes up with a solution or an idea that comes from them, they're more likely to do it. They're more likely to follow through. But 99.99999% of the chances when we tell others what to do or we try to improve them kind of like myself, you know, it's the only 1% of you are actually going to take this and run with it. The rest, they're not. How to motivate your man is making it in a way that it's his idea. That's how he's going to improve. If we're caught up on like doing do this, correcting him, blah, blah, blah. We all know that's exhausting and they're not going to do it. I'm just going to let you know right now, bring you so much clarity. Stop it. <laughs> Make it in a way it's his idea. Have him get it out of his mouth. The next solution is communicating with him, communicating with each other in a way that you both can come together and become each other's best friend. Man, when you are in a relationship with your best friend, you know, the one that you are obviously sexually attracted to and all this kind of stuff, a true partnership and you can come together and communicate with one another, that creates so much trust that leads into intimacy and other things. Intimacy is so highly crucial in a relationship. We human beings, want that <laughs> i don't care where you come from we all want that and that starts by communicating with one another making each other feel safe like they trust you you don't want to be in a relationship where they don't trust you that's horrible that's like the worst thing that you can live it's not trusting your partner communicate it's a big game changer and if you communicate you obviously know your relationship better than i am but i there's a time and place when to communicate, obviously. And if you're bold enough, and even if you're scared, share your demons. Like I was scared. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to share my demons with him. My skeletons. What if he doesn't love me anymore? What if he doesn't see me the same anymore? No, he loved me even more because I was, I'm able to trust him. And people want that. People want people to trust one another. <laughs> so do that. And keep in mind of the vision that you sign up for in this relationship. What is that vision for your marriage? Just like in anything else in business, a man without a vision will perish in business, in relationships, in health, in finances, in spirituality, no vision, destruction, vision. Now we're talking. Now it's more motivating. Now you're living a purpose filled life. When you want that, have that vision in mind. The moment things are, falling out apart honestly it starts with the vision things are falling apart stuff is hitting the fans you name it lack of vision so i hope this video brought so much clarity to you i enjoy so enjoy talking about this particular topic if you can't get enough of it watch this video next this video stop emasculating your man go ahead and click on this video next thank you so much subscribe like comment if you haven't done so and if you found this video helpful share it with the people that desperately need to hear this type of message thank you so much i appreciate you i believe in you let's do this see you next week